Welcome to this week's ACA Route 1, the shorter version of our regular weekly podcast. I'm Tom, joined by Jimmy, and each Monday we'll quickly run through the midweek action, selecting our best bets and fancies and seeing if we can build an ACA in that too. As ever, let us know your thoughts in the comments all through Sports and Life Football social media channels. And as we say every single week, remember to keep it fun. Never bet more than you can afford. This podcast is 18 plus. Please gamble responsibly. Right then, let's see if we can build an acker for Tuesday's game. We'll do it in two parts this. We'll do the first part, we'll look at the Tuesday game, seeing if there's an acker to get involved with. The second part, we'll talk any other fancies as well. So Tuesday's Premier League, the Sky Bet EFL, National League 2, if mm. you want to dip into that. Um, feels natural to start in the Premier League. Yeah. Where else but the Premier League? What you got for me? It's a bit It's a bit of an iffy one. It's I look, of... This is a good start, isn't it? It's a bit of an iffy one. On. Start strong. We like if you won six to four about Fulham to beat Everton. Now, okay. when I initially looked at the slate, it didn't stand out at all, but you scratch the surface a little bit and there's a key bit of information that really sticks out. Now, it's about Everton. One winning the last eight and I was thinking, why on earth could that possibly be? I'll tell you why. You did tell me how to pronounce his name before we started recording, but I forgot. Decore. Yeah, that'll do. Decore, he has unbelievable pressing figures. He's He's been a monumental part since Dyche uh, took charge at Everton. Uh, impressive in terms of offensive output as well. He's playing close to the striker. Ninad, as I usually do, I lean on him for all, all the intelligent bits of information. He informed me that his non-penalty XG per shot is 0 0.2, and he did... The Italian gesture after saying so that. it's important. It's important. It's important as heck. He's crucial in both boxes, in and out of possession. He's missed seven of the last eight. And without him, Everton's only win came in the replay against Palace. And I don't know if you remember, but Andre Gomez... Is it Andre? Another yes. name, but... Yes. Yeah, it yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. Andre, Andre <laughs> Gomez scored a worldy free kick to nick that game. So without Decore, Everton are poor. And crucially, Tom... He's ruled out here, so yeah. Fulham really. If you were going to finish this with his back for this game. That's <laughs> all right, let's delete that entire thing. Yeah, look, and he's been ruled out of Fulham's clash with obviously the Fulham clash. He's out of the Tottenham game as well when they go to Goodison Park. So potentially one to remember for the weekend there as well. Yep. Yeah. I'm all over this, to be fair. Looking at Fulham's home results as well. We focus mm. on Everton. They beat West Ham 5-0, beat Forest 5-0, beat Luton, beat Sheffield United. Win over Arsenal for good measure as well recently as well. So... Okay. Round 6-4, to four, is it? 29-20? 6-4, yes, sir. I'm happy. Let's take Fulham, then, for the first selection of this midweek's acker, I should say, there, around that 6-4 to four marker. Let's go Championship next, actually, because there are two games that are jumping out to me here. We've got mm. Coventry, Bristol City. We've got Leicester, Swansea. Two home wins, but to me it feels there's a drastic difference in price. Yeah, here. and the other thing I was thinking is I like both of the home teams, but... I don't know about you, it doesn't work like that in betting. You can't have the two um, home favourites in one division both to win in an Aki. Yeah, to be oh, fair, we've it. done this before and international breaks have gone, oh, League One, there's yeah. two teams here. This is nailed on. And yep. like, no, no, no. The other hasn't. It's not how it works. Uh, who do you fancy then? Because, can I guess? Have a guess. Foxes. How dare you? No, it's the oh. other one. I knew it'd be Cov. Go on. <laughs> um, yeah, this is four to five, this price here. I'll let you take it away because I know how much you love Coventry. But this was a game I had down as well that I really fancied. Yeah, well, I, I love Coventry, but I'm also a big fan of Liam Manning. And I keep... Well, I know you yeah. touted them to have a late push for the playoffs in the outright preview. I'm going to need a late, late push here. <laughs> late, late. <laughs> Not started well since I wrote that. <laughs> any, I'm just keeping any minute they're going to jolt into yeah, life. Any yeah. minute. You're leaving a bit late, boys. <laughs> uh, one win in the last seven. Yes. It must be said that that win came against West Ham in the Cup. So a pretty big scalp. And they also drew against Forest in their most recent game, same yeah. competition. But away from home, they are poor. One win in 10. Uh, polar opposite of that, Coventry, they're in fine form, unbeaten in 11, only lost once at home all season. So essentially what this boils down to for me is good home team, bad away team. Easy. Easy. Look at this. Yeah, nine unbeaten now, 11 all comps. Seven have been league wins. Um and Bristol City as well, Solomon Melton Road, they just struggle mm. on the road all season. It's something that has just carried over, whether it's Nigel Pearson, whether it's Lee Manny, whoever, they just can't crack it. Yeah. I'm not too sure why. I also just right. put Ben Shefford, Josh Eccles midfield and a fire emoji. That was basically my analysis because I'm, you know, cool like that. 
Yeah. That was my notes on Coventry. Well, you don't need to say any more, really, do you? Don't really need to say any more. Um, By your emoji. I mean, if we've both got Coventry, second pick. Yeah, it seems too easy breezy, but... It seems quite nice. So, as a double, you're talking around 7-2-ish to two-ish on a Fulham and Coventry double there. Yeah. Where... There's one more game, though. I was going to say, where are you going to take us next for this last pick? Because I was stumped after these two. I have got, well, I've got two more, to be fair. And the price difference, one's 11 to 8, one's 23 to 20. I fancy them both for a win. So I'll go for the bigger price. Because if I just add this now, you're talking around 9.5 to 1 if we go for a treble here. Let me take you to Skybet League 2. Let me take you to a team that haven't played in seemingly forever. Because mm. they got postponement. They had the FA Cup involvement for the other side they were meant to play. Sutton. Mm. to beat Harrogate. Now, you look at the table, you go, what the hell are you doing here? <laughs> that was going to... I was just you Googling the table. I was just Googling it. I was thinking, hmm. So Sutton, now, Steve Morrison, uh, former Millwall, Leeds, Norwich forward, is in charge. He dropped down to non-league, did very well there. Just It always felt like a bit of a stopgap until a football league job became available, which he has. He took the Sutton job. Since he's come in, it's three consecutive draws. They're on a run of four consecutive draws. You go, right, and what? you got to remember where they were in the league. Those draws have come against away at Warsaw, who have had an upturn in form, away at Mansfield, who have just been brilliant throughout the season, and at home to Barrow as well, who are well in title mix, not just promotion as well. Three good results there. And then I was looking into these games and watching these games back. They played really well in the first half against Warsaw. They started well against Mansfield, deserved the lead there as well. And that second half against Barrow, brilliant start to that, deserved to be winning as well. Mm. 11 to 8 you can get on Harrogate, who have been surprising this season. I think outside playoff shout. Yeah, I was going to ask you they about Harrogate. It or not, I'm you, you, not you've always sure. seemed pretty hot on Harrogate. At home, mm. I'll have them to beat anyone. Oh. Away from home, I think. Okay, I could probably oppose them here. You can get Sutton. 11 to 8, maybe 6 to 4. I don't know where, you, where you're looking around. Yeah. To me, it seems big, considering yeah. the upturn in both results, performance, and obviously form since Morrison's come in. Yeah. This looks like a game where the target go, right, this could be the one we actually get our first win in. Oh, yeah. Well, I was just uh, searching furiously because you said Steve Morrison. I was thinking, is that the same Steve Morrison who did so well at Cardiff? That's the one. He, That's um, the one. I can't remember where he ended up. He was... I've just uh, got his wiki up now. Cardiff under 23s, Cardiff. Then he dropped down to Hornchurch. Hornchurch, that was it. And that, that to me, it was always like, oh, this is a bit weird. But then mm. it always kind of felt like, actually, are they London? Are they... That's the fucking difference, isn't it? <laughs> Not too far. Oh, <laughs> Minster. Yeah, they're in London. And um, so it felt like, obviously, you know, Millwall Way. I don't know. I think London's one little dot on a map. Yeah. So I don't know where anything is. But it felt like, you know... Down south, and he doesn't have to go far. I was going to say, don't ask me where yeah. teams are. Well, get the maps up, get Google <laughs> yeah. maps up. But he's gone to Sutton, and yeah, they have seen an upturn in form. I think there's a bit of a pull with his kind of status at certain clubs and the loan ease they can yeah. get in. We're starting to see that already. 11 to 8, you can get Sutton to beat Harrogate. No, I really like it. And I was just thinking about his time at Cardiff, and I, I think that what speaks most about a managerial sacking is the obviously it sounds it sounds too obvious to say but it's the reaction of the fans and there was genuine outrage when he got sacked at Cardiff because there was sort of shifting the direction of the club he was nurturing nurturing he was nurturing the young nurturing. players <laughs> he was bringing through the young players and, from and the he, nest young come on ones boys. <laughs> come here come with old Papa Steve <laughs> 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 no, but yeah, I, anyway, I really do like that pick, especially if it's old Papa Steve uh, in charge. Of he keeps him up. Do you see? He keeps him up. Does I he? don't know who's vulnerable. I don't know, someone like Grimsby, Doncaster. Someone is vulnerable and Sutton's up to, I, I don't know, maybe I'm getting carried away with early season form, but to me, I don't know, Sutton might stay up under Morrison. And I they would... could start with a home win over Harrogate, which is what we want. Oh. If we put those... Three teams in, it's nine and a half to one, that trip. I'm all over it. I'm all over it. While you were just speaking, then I was trying to find the odds on to stay up, but uh, I can't quite find it. <laughs> yeah, but we'll look at that. We'll bring it back up on Thursday's main episode. What about those three teams then? Yep. For Tuesday, Acker. I'm all over them. We've settled on that. I'm settled. That's a nice price, isn't it? We always say we want around 10 to one. That's basically it yeah. on those three teams. Happy? Happy. This midweek's Acker then, three teams... Three home teams. We've got Fulham to beat Everton. We've got Coventry to beat Bristol City. And in Skybet League 2, we've got Sutton to beat Harrogate. And as I said there, that treble coming out around 9.5 to 1. Coming up in part two, we'll talk any other bets. So that's our Tuesday accumulator there. And remember to head to sportinglife.com forward slash football. You'll be able to find that at an enhanced price. 
And if you haven't already, please, as we always say, like, subscribe on Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts or YouTube. We'd appreciate it massively if you haven't already. I thought you were going to join in there a little bit. Please. I really do enjoy reading the horrible comments, the mean ones, the abusive ones. So yeah, Jimmy thrives on this. We will go through all those on Thursday on the main episode, by the way, when the other lads are in. On to any other bets then for Tuesday, Wednesday. Oh. This is kind of going to be a feature of the Route 1 podcast. It becomes a bit more, you know, just generic. Not necessarily ACA picks or ones you can include. Any other bets. Tuesday Premier League. Let's start there. Take it away. Where's your eye been caught? Have I? I've got bags and bags and bags of bets. Yes, First look, one. At the, look at his eyes. Look at the <laughs> excitement in his eyes. The opposite of that K Burley dog. Happiness in his eyes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, come on. I interrupted you. Carry on. Uh, Villa and Newcastle start there, and I know this is a pick that you like because I've stole it from you. Oh, brilliant news. previews. Brilliant news. Watkins assists. He's uh, 10 to 3 for 1, 25 to 1 for 2. Whopping price. He's got 8 this season domestically, 1.5 key passes per game, which is a pass that leads to a shot. If you're not aware, <laughs> you're at all <laughs> the cameras here. Yeah, which basically means he's setting up a shot at least once, nearly twice every league game this season. Uh, he has hit the, he has set up two goals once this term as well. So you're going to get a run for your money, I think, at the 25s of about two. It's an adapted role for him as well. We know oh, he's yeah. a goal scorer, but this season under Emery, I've got him for top goal scorer in the league. So if you just stop being so creative, that'd be nice. <laughs> kick it in the net himself. Yeah, I'm all on board with you on that one. Would you say Villa in this game, do you think? 10, 10 to 11, even money. Yeah, I had to note it down. It's such a sticky one because, like, it's uh, like one loss since the beginning of November, 15 games for Villa. That They seem to have been faltering a little bit, but I think they're just masters. Well, yeah. they're, 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 they're held to such high standards because of the start they've made. They're not actually playing that bad recently. The form's just slightly flatlined. And the overriding thing for me, if I was going to nail my colours to the mast in this game is... Villa's home form. Oh, God. Uh, much has been made of it, and rightly so. It's unbelievable. But to be honest, I'd, I'd probably be staying clear of the 1x2 here. Let me take you to the city ground then. Forest to score one plus goals. Mm. Uh, more commonly known as to score a goal. <laughs> 8 to 11 in this game. Obviously, it's a bit short for a single, but if you want something to include in your accumulators, just the fact that in normal time, they obviously got one in extra time against Blackpool. 13 goals in normal time in seven games under Nuno. A couple of those have seen them score twice. Or more, they play Arsenal in this game. Obviously, it's going to be a tough one, but that's why you're getting a bit of a chunkier price on that. Would bat them to find the net and just continue that fine form in front of goal. I'm going to... I'll chuck back to you in a minute because I'm really excited about this one and I want to chuck it out there. 10 to 1, this pick in Luton Brighton. Shit. 10 to 1, both teams to score in both halves. Oh, my goodness. This game. I can just see this being mad, right? I could easily see it. Q nil nil. Sorry, everyone, about that. <laughs> but it's one in our uh, Brighton's Cup game away at Stoke. It happened away at Chelsea. It happened away at Nottingham Forest as well. This was a winner in Luton v Arsenal. It, they also scored twice in the recent second half game against Chelsea. Luton v Brighton, Tuesday night, 7.45. You get both teams to score in both halves around 10 to 1. Oh, I like it a lot. I, w- I, was, just, I was just looking then. It, Chef United let it down at Bramall Lane, didn't they? Mm. Because there were four goals in the first half. Brighton scored three in the second. Yeah. Yeah. Bad oh, team. Bad, bad team. Bad team. Bad, uh, team, bad club. Give us one more from Tuesday, then we'll obviously just move on to Wednesday. Yeah, and, and what a link that is, because my last one comes from Sheffield United's trip to Selhurst Park. Brilliant. We didn't even plan that, so that's nice and natural. Carry on. Nice and natural. <laughs> yeah, shock. Surprise, surprise. It's a bit of a trade of mine. I I, I, I would personally be siding with Ivor Grebic card and United win, because... I don't it's know if you know. Jimmy but the fun special. <laughs> I support Chef United, so I'm going to back them every week. <laughs> They're going to go and good any day now. But yeah, it, it's a massive game at the foot of the table because Palace lose this. They're at danger. Well, they already are in the miss, but they're at danger of sleepwalking towards the drop zone. So I think if you want to pick a team to win and combine it with the keeper, Dean Henson's brilliant for it. And our new stopper, Grebic. Grebic, Grebo. Let's go Madrid. Yes, that lad. Yep. Grebic. He got three last season at Atleti, three the season before in France. So he's a bit of a shyster. So if either side gets the noses in front, they'll be pulling. Stoppers will be pulling out all the stops to make sure it stays that way. Let's quickly round off then with uh, any Wednesday picks. Liverpool, Chelsea. To me, we have to discuss this game. It is the big game of the week. Darwin Nunes for me, eleven to eight any time. You mean? Chaos. Who plays like, up front for the big reds? That's the, that's the bloke. That great song. 11 goals in 33, but three in his last two, four in his last seven. He's starting to find a bit of form. And yeah, it's just chaos. He doesn't know what he's going to do. I don't know what he's going to do. 
11 to 8 to score in this game, in which Liverpool should win, let's be honest. The, the clock news, they're going to win every week. Now yep. We know this. Yep. Anything from Wednesday. Stick to that same game, but it's interesting with Darwin Nunes because everyone makes such a fuss about him missing big chances that it goes under the radar. I'm sure he's hit 10 10 for goals and assists this season. Mm. Unbelievable player. Yeah. And to think he's just finding his feet, only going to improve. But sticking with that game, I actually like a goal scorer for the blue side, Ooh. Cole Palmer. Yes, great shout. He's, he's got 11 this term for the Blues and he's actually opened the scoring in three of the last five Premier League games. 11 to 1 you can get on him to do the same Wednesday. I think I, that did catch my eye. Penalty taker? Penalty taker, yes sir. Uh, we will quit the round off, but uh, I'll give you one more tip then. One, one more bet from Wednesday. I've got one more. Well, then, you can want to go first? No, no, you can have it. It's go. another goal scorer, and it's a bit ridiculous. City Burnley. <laughs> oh, we're oh we're dear. But it was one of them where I was scrolling to find him because I, I have a keen interest. Lyle Foster, he's sevens, three six five, and you need any time, any time. It's massive, but with good reason because obviously they're playing City. But my first impression of him was crap. He's never going to be able to score in the Premier League. What are they doing signing him? I was wrong. I was drastically wrong. He's brilliant. As a lone striker, he's everything you want. He's got four in 12. Goals per 90 for anyone who's interested is 0.37. So definite value in that price. Obviously, the opposition has plumped those the uh, price up a little bit. But his goals have come... He's got two against Villa and one against Spurs. So when they're playing against the high line on the counter, he can make something out of nothing. Let's quickly summarise that. I want one of your any other best bets. Just one. If you could only back just one of them, which one are you going for? Oh, Watkins, one and two assists. Yeah, I like that a lot. I'd probably, maybe because it's a shorter price, but Forrest to score one plus. Yeah. Included with a few others that we mentioned there. I think that's a decent pick. They are our selections then. We've got our Tuesday Acker. We've got our any other bets there as well. And as we say, remember to keep it fun. Never bet more you can afford. Please gamble responsibly. And make sure you get in touch with us on social media. Let us know what you think of the picks. The format as well. We always like to hear from you. And we will be back with a full episode on Thursday. <laughs>